good getting up in the morning doing my hair you know like stuff like that um obviously there were days where i looked like king kong but yeah let me tell you something about the sleep here the sleep was the kind of sleep where you fell asleep your mouth is open and there's a dribble rolling into your eye hey guys and welcome back to my channel thank you for tuning in today because i have a hopefully very informative video for mums now i am pretty new to this whole mum youtube space but i was really convicted to make a youtube channel just because i feel like i'm really really lucky i have had so much support during my pregnancy from so many different places and i realized that it's quite a fortunate place to be in as a first time mom and so i wanted to use my channel and my platform to share my experiences, things that I found out, things that I found useful with an audience who will hopefully find my experiences help them and that is the main thing for my channel. So I wanted to create this video as my first video just because it makes sense. Um, obviously from the title you can see this is going to be about my personal first trimester essentials. So your first trimester is from essentially week zero of your pregnancy to week 12 and I am in my third trimester. So this is quite a reflective video. I'll be going back on my thoughts, my feelings, symptoms, how I handled my first trimester because whew, it was a lot. Um, and yeah, I hope that this video will help you guys if you are in your first trimester or you've just found out you're pregnant congratulations mama it's gonna be an amazing journey and yeah so let's get to it so first trimester is i don't know it's like for me personally it was really really exciting like obviously i just found out i was pregnant it was like you know, um, even just finding out and peeing on the stick and seeing those two lines, like it is just an indescribable feeling. But if you're watching this, I'm assuming it's because you also are going through the same thing and you've had those two lines. So congratulations. And yeah, I didn't really know what to expect. Obviously, you like see pregnant women and like there's loads of women around me who had been pregnant before. But I've always, not always, but now that I've been through it, I will say that everybody's journey is like really personal to them. So anything I do describe in this video, like it may not even affect you or it may not be something that you have to deal with. But I'm not a medical professional and this is not about giving you like medical advice. This is more about like just me sharing my experiences and you can take from it what you wish but this is not like me trying to be a doctor because I'm not so yeah so first trimester first thing that like was just crazy was how quickly the tiredness set in now I think obviously logically when you think about it now like this fetus is going from like two cells and it's going to like form into like a whole human so really if you think about it you should be like I'm gonna be tired no 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 like there's literally nothing that can compare you or compare prepare you for this tiredness and I'm gonna go on my own experience but a lot of women have said the same thing the first trimester is quite rough like the sleep that I was doing was like 12, 13 hours. I could barely stay awake for three to four hours at a time. It was a lot. So the first thing that I would like really recommend is that if you can, and it's really hard because most of the time you are working and also in this time, you're not actually really telling people that you're pregnant. Now, um, I know that in like black Caribbean households, you don't really tell anyone in the beginning like you kind of just it's a very personal thing you might tell like a close family friend or like your mom or someone like that but 
it's like you going through it by yourself so it's tough because you have to kind of act normal but then at the same time your body is doing the most so that was the first thing like sleep was crazy so um but you need to sleep so if your body is telling you to sleep you're tired you need to have a nap you can't stay out as long then you're just gonna have to sleep because your body is gonna be very 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 tired it's working very 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 hard like from the moment of like fertilization so sleep is a must like my other symptoms was like nausea so i suppose i had like i was never sick like i didn't vomit at all which i'm very very grateful for but the nausea was crazy so literally the only thing that i could use to combat the nausea was food so i had to make sure that i was never hungry because the minute that i felt hungry i had nausea and it was like it felt like it was debilitating now i know most people will say oh well you're really lucky you didn't vomit i'm telling you yeah having that feeling of wanting to vomit the whole 12 weeks was mad like it was mad and then on top of the sleep let me tell you something about the sleep here the sleep was the kind of sleep where you fell asleep your mouth is open and there's a dribble rolling into your eye yeah it was like it was like next level tiredness and then you add that to the nausea it was just pretty rough and i remember going to selfridges and i went to do a sneaker pickup and I couldn't tell anyone I was pregnant and obviously my our normal thing is to go out we get nice cocktails we have a really nice day of it and I would literally was just like oh man on antibiotics but really like I just wanted to go to bed and so um like tackling those pregnancy symptoms with trying to live a normal life you're not showing nobody knows you're pregnant is quite difficult I didn't really have any other symptoms it was really just tiredness um nausea that was about it and i know that makes me quite lucky because i know other women have really different experiences of their first trimester but that was basically my main thing so that's kind of like my first trimester symptoms i suppose but i want to get into the essentials of what helped me get through the first 12 weeks and hopefully you'll find this useful and yeah so i will start so as soon as i found out i was pregnant i knew like i'm not gonna say i was the healthiest eater but i ate okay um i have a really sweet tooth but i knew that i wanted my body to be in like the best condition to have the best chance of developing a healthy baby because at the point where like i saw the two lines this whole thing was no longer about me. It was about ensuring the health of my pregnancy and my baby. So that being said, I, and every single healthcare professional will tell you this, anybody who's had a baby, prenatal vitamins. So as soon as I found out, the next day I went to the chemist and I bought the Pregnacare uh, prenatal vitamins. I bought the Pregnacare Max and I used the Pregnacare Max throughout my whole uh, first trimester. And the reason why I wanted that one is because it had everything that you needed. So um, all your vitamins, minerals, and also it had an added omega-3 supplement. I just knew that I wanted to have the best. This first trimester, in my mind anyway, was like, this is gonna where you develop the baby's developing their heart, their um, brain, all those organs are like literally starting to form. So I wanted to have like the best um, start to pregnancy as possible. Now, Pregnacare uh, Plus did cost me roughly around twenty pounds from the pharmacy, and I think that gave me like maybe thirty tablets or twenty eight tablets, which is quite expensive but for me i just wanted to make sure that i had something that was solid you will realize that like literally the cost of things doesn't really matter to you anymore 
you will just want the best. So, um, but what I will say, one of my regrets is probably spending so much on the prenatal vit vitamins, because if you go to your local pharmacy or Boots or Superdrug or somewhere like that, you will find vitamins that are exactly the same, that contain the same stuff that you can just use for your for your pregnancy and they will be a lot cheaper some of the own brand stuff is just as good as the pregnant care so you didn't have to like i didn't have to spend that much money but i did so some people found that their prenatal vitamins you know made them nauseous or um contributed to like some of their sickness so you have to just find one that works for you i was lucky the pregnant care that i picked up was fine didn't cause me any issues and i was able to take them easily like every day um i say every day there were days where i completely forgot and that's fine um my midwife just said that you build up your uh, nutrients and vitamin levels over time so missing one day like you don't need to freak out about that which was um reassuring <laughs> Prenatal vitamins are essential. You need the folic acid at least and vitamin D. And another thing that I found out, which um, was really useful, although I didn't find out until I was about 10 weeks and they did my booking in appointment to the antenatal clinic. Um, if you are of black or darker skin tones, then you need to be taking extra vitamin D. That was the advice that I got from my midwife and she said that even though it's contained within the pregnant care and other um, antenatal, prenatal, sorry, vitamins, you should be taking extra vitamin D. So I ended up buying another small tub of vitamin D. It cost me about two pounds for like 60 tablets, so it was really cheap. And I took those extra, um, and I have been taking them for the rest of my pregnancy. So that was uh, prenatal vitamins, absolutely essential. And you don't have to spend a fortune. A few pounds will get you exactly what you need. You don't need all the 45 vitamins. As long as you get a prenatal that has the main pregnancy vitamins, including folic acid and vitamin D, as far as I'm aware, um, that's what you need. So make sure you get those as soon as you can. Okay, the next essential was, it was quite an exciting part of it actually, was downloading a pregnancy app. Now, being a first time mum, you literally have no idea about what is going to happen to your body. Um, for 12 weeks, so three months, you don't see any um, healthcare professionals, well, in the UK anyway. So the first time you see a healthcare person is roughly about 10, 10 weeks, they'll contact you to get your family history and they'll ask you everything about all your bits and pieces, what you've been up to in your life, literally everything. <laughs> and then you will also get a 12 week scan. So between the day you find out and your 12 week scan, you have no idea what's going on inside, like in your body. So the pregnancy app, gives you like daily and weekly updates about what's happening kind of like some of the symptoms that you might be experiencing it explains loads of things about pregnancy it was so 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 good so i use the pregnancy plus app and it has taken me from the beginning like week four to now week 32 almost and it has been so helpful like it shows you um, what happens at each stage. It shows you week by week the size. So it'll be like, oh, today it's the size of a jelly bean. And then next week it'll be like the size of, I don't know, an apple. Okay, not next week. That's quite a big jump. But <laughs> you know what I mean? So it will show you the size by fruit or sweets or animals, which is really cool. Um, particularly because it's just like, I feel like most of the time I'm just waiting for the next scan. And in between that, I can kind of visualize like what my baby is up to, what they're doing, how they're growing, how they're progressing, what's happening with my body, what to do at each stage to prepare. It was very, very useful. So I would definitely download a pregnancy tracker app. Um, as I said, I use Pregnancy Plus, but there's loads of other apps out there and download that, it will keep you sane in the three months that you're trying to um, survive and also where 
you haven't seen your little bubba yet so yeah that was really really helpful okay so the next one is water massive massively important water during your whole, whole pregnancy and beyond is going to become have to become your best friend i wasn't the best water drinker before pregnancy but as i said it's not about me so <laughs> i had to find a way to drink at least two liters uh, a day and i had this water bottle which i've been through about five now because i leave them places but during my first trimester particularly i found plain water just impossible to drink so i had to have water with lemon so I, every morning i would literally have this one liter bottle um, water bottle i'll pour the water in put my lemon slices in and then that would last me if i filled it up twice that would be my water for the day um and then aside from that sometimes i had to put like a little bit of like the robinson squash in just to have a little bit of taste to be able to drink the water because plain water was just with the taste and everything that was in my mouth oh it just wasn't happening so um obviously you want to watch your sugar intake so you don't want to have like loads of juice and stuff like that but i just dropped like a little bit of the robinson squash in there and it just worked for me so obviously if you're not a big water drinker you're gonna have to find something that works for you add in fruit so lemon or um even mint cucumber that kind of stuff can just give a little bit of a taste to water that might make you drink a little bit more but getting your two liters is really really important so i'd say um invest in a water bottle you can get loads of really cool ones that prompt you to drink you can also get water drinking apps which i have used in the past but it got really annoying i'm not gonna lie because it kept popping up to drink water and i wasn't drinking water so um <laughs> i don't use the, the apps but if that's something that will work for you to be reminded then you can get those apps as well but water is really 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 important and staying hydrated is important particularly if you have like um sickness because you obviously will lose a lot of water through vomiting so yeah we want to make sure that you are drinking enough water okay so the next essential and it's not really an essential but it's more like a step to take was choosing a hospital now in the uk and i'm gonna speak about the uk i have no idea how it works in any other country but you mostly self-refer to a hospital so i phoned my gp and my gp was just like oh congratulations but you need to choose a hospital and i was like okay and i was like how do i do that and they were like you can just self-refer um mostly on their websites whatever hospital it is they will give you instructions about how to refer yourself to their antenatal services so there are a couple of considerations that i took into account and that was um obviously first of all the distance because obviously at first you're not going to be going to the hospital very often but now i'm in my third trimester i'm going to the hospital like once every two weeks so and you obviously you don't know how your pregnancy is going to go you don't know if you need to be seen at hospital for emergencies so i would say looking at the distance from where you live to where the hospital is is really really important if you've had a good experience with the hospital in one department then that for me sometimes um, can help you to make a decision about where you decide to go for your antenatal treatment although different hospitals will thrive and do better in different departments so just because you've had a bad experience at one hospital in one department doesn't mean that their maternity department is going to also be the same but psychologically i just wanted to be somewhere where i knew that i'd always had good care where i felt comfortable and so that's why i chose the hospital that i am at um, on top of that i looked at their ratings for maternity care and they were really good and i know a few people that have given birth there from 10 years ago up until two years ago and they all had wonderful things to say not only that but i had to spend some um, i had to go for two visits at the early pregnancy unit at that particular hospital and when i had um my service there was incredible the way they dealt with the situation so sensitively because if you're at the early pregnancy unit you know that it's because of symptoms that may pose a risk to your pregnancy so 
they were incredible and I was just like do you know what this is where I want to be it wasn't too far but it wasn't my closest hospital but it was still within um you know a, a good distance from my house so I chose that hospital but you have to decide what is important to you is it the technology that's available is it the birthing center that you want to use is it you just have to decide for you what hospital you want to be at but the other thing I will say is that I chose a, another hospital before ending up at the one I'm at now I know very confusing but I just wasn't happy with my first visit there and my first interactions and I was able to change to this new hospital that I am now at and I did that all within the first eight to nine weeks of pregnancy and I feel great and settled at my new hospital so don't be afraid if you're not happy with the care to voice your opinion but also um, if necessary like I did I did end up changing hospital obviously as a black woman I know this the statistics for um, pregnancy and so I knew it was important that I was somewhere where I felt cared for safe and listened to and that was it so where I am now I'm very happy but obviously you need to make your decision about what you think um, will be important to you for your pregnancy the next thing I suppose isn't essential but again it's just um, probably more a piece of advice which is that to try to continue as much as possible the things that you enjoy doing and I know it's really hard because you're tired and you know as I said you might not be having a great time with sickness but trying to keep up like some of your little hobbies staying active exercising try not to stay still will be really important not just for your physical health but for your mental health as well so I really tried as much as possible to keep doing my content keep doing my um campaigns and stuff with the brand even though I felt horrible I just knew I wanted to keep going um obviously when I found out I just thought I was going to be able to just fly through and just keep doing content and it was really really hard I'm not gonna lie but I just knew that I'd worked really hard and I didn't want you know to feel like I was letting things go but at the same time I love making content I love working on campaigns I enjoy being able to work with brands and so for me like keeping up with work and stuff was really important to me for my mental health which brings me on to my last essential which is reduce stress now I know that is really hard because pregnancy is very very or can be very stressful and quite hard mentally physically emotionally hormones are raging but you need to make sure that you're in like a low stress environment so there's not more things adding to like your already anxieties and stuff around becoming a pe becoming a mom becoming a parent all that kind of stuff so try to use the support system that you have around you and i understand that it is actually a privilege to have people to who support you but at the same time just um, self-care is really really important I am gonna film a video of my self-care routine during pregnancy doing things that help me to stay relaxed and stress-free and there is medical reasons for reducing your stress levels because stress is um, or can be dangerous for your pregnancy and for your baby so as a mom to be reducing stress is really 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 important so whether that is people who are stressing you or stress at work you must 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 try to reduce stress as much as possible um don't be afraid to ask for help and if you are struggling with your mental health to contact your local your gp your healthcare provider wherever you can get help because you need to make sure that your mind is in a good place for your pregnancy easier said than done because i've had so many ups and downs like my mental health has been up and down i've had to take time off from work for anxiety and i already um live with anxiety so it's something that i knew was something i had to take into account for my pregnancy for everybody else it'll be different and it might be something new that you're experiencing where you've never felt anxiety or depression or anything like that before but if you do feel that way one you're not alone and two you must reach out for help 
because you want to make sure that you're having a healthy pregnancy so yeah um reducing stress is really really important particularly in your first trimester um obviously along the way you will learn how to deal with pregnancy and um and stuff like that but at the beginning when your little baba is really developing fast and things are happening fast um yeah reducing stress is really really important things that i did was obviously create content do things that i love um other than that it was taking time out going for massages painting my nails making myself feel good getting up in the morning doing my hair you know like stuff like that um obviously there were days where i looked like king kong but yeah most days i tried to get up and do something exercise as well um to the point where now in my third trimester i'm still walking 5k which is pretty cool so i'm hoping that um physically i'll be ready for birth but also mentally it's really helped me go outside taking the nature i started doing woodland walks like i've been in my zen this pregnancy so um yeah i hope you guys will find a happy place too aside from that it is really exciting your first trimester is so so exciting because you're growing a baby you are preparing for mom life and you are going to want to buy things and just immerse yourself in pregnancy List literally during pregnancy the only thing you can think about is your baby like i was actually like just all i could think about was my baby that was it i was obsessed during my first trimester i still am to a point and maybe it's got worse but <laughs> um yeah literally every single day i was like thinking about my baby so it is a very exciting life change and as i said congratulations if you're watching this video and you have just found out you're pregnant and you want to know a little bit more about your first trimester this was my experience of my first trimester and some of the things that i used to help me so this was just a little bit of an advice about how you may want to um i don't know take on your first trimester but um yeah i hope this video was helpful i am going to do a second trimester video because there's a little bit more like stuff involved in that so like there was a little bit more physical like products and stuff and um there's more bodily changes that you might need to be dealing with that video will be a lot more interactive where i can actually um explain like how i use some of the stuff how i change my room all that kind of stuff so please do stay tuned i have a lot more videos to come and i hope you guys will like comment and subscribe let me know if there's anything that i missed from this video that you used in your first trimester or are using in your first trimester and yeah let me know your due dates as well because i'd love to keep up with your pregnancy journeys and i hope you will keep up with mine so i'll be back soon my next video will be out very very soon it will be about my second trimester i'm gonna try and do a lot more content and yeah uh i'll be back soon peace